welcome, Chris. Never, not one time. <laughs> like, okay, fine, no problem, I can hold this. So, Voice of the Martyrs, this conference has really spoke to me to say, look, it's real, uh, it's happening, and it's the norm. It's not abnormal, it's not strange, it's not uh, some, some fringe issue that's happening. It's always happened. And you're a part of it. And you're very, very, very blessed, fortunate, to be in a place in America or in the Western nations that doesn't have this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's not to say we won't. <coughs> right? So number one, tell the folks that this is happening. We are joining churches all over the world today for this International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church. Because at the end of the day, we are one. Fellowships around America, around the Western nation, everywhere. We're uniting as one body. We're just coming together saying we are one body in Christ. Amen. Where do we get this from? Well, from the scriptures. John chapter 15, verse 20 says this. Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Period. <laughs> Hebrews 13, which is the uh, bedrock of Voice of the Martyrs, they say, remember those who are in prison, as though in prison with them, and those who are mistreated, since you also are in the body. In other words, don't just think about them, or, or pray for them, that's good but feel what they're feeling because we're in the same body. When one part of the body hurts, we all hurt. First Corinthians chapter 12, 25 to 27 says that there should be no schism, separation, division, no division in the body, the body of Christ, but the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all members suffer with it. And if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ. There is no insignificant part. There is no division. There is no part that gets more care than the others. Or honor. Ephesians 4. One through six, therefore I, Paul, I, the prisoner of the Lord. He's in prison, just like Richard Wormbrand up there, who you just saw, and many others around the world. Paul is in prison. I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you, who are not in prison, to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called. There is one body and one spirit, just as you also were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. We are, in a very, very real, literal way, one body. Regardless of where we came from or what we look like, it's irrelevant. 2 Timothy 3. Paul lays it out very clear. All who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. All. I read that, and I say, well, if I'm not, maybe I'm not desiring it enough. Maybe. I mean, I don't want to be hurt, right? Nobody wants to suffer. But at the same time, if, we're, if this is evidence or proof, then maybe we want it. And finally, 
Look at Revelation 6, verse 9 through 11. If you don't think that Jesus cares what's going on and what has been going on for 2,000 years. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altars the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Right? They're killed because of their witness for the word of God and their testimony about Jesus. That's it. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? And a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest just a little while longer, until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren, who had, would be killed as they were, was completed. So there's some more. There's some more to come. The common theme of all those, what do you think? It's not about us. It's not about us. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. It's about the body as a whole. It's not about us. Now, there have been more than one uh, report come out the past year or so that has said the level of persecution of believers, of Christians throughout the world, is the highest ever recorded today. Ever recorded. We don't know of a time that's worse except the first century. Right? The original church, the Romans, the lions, all that stuff. Really bad times. It's been, it hasn't been that bad. It hasn't been as bad as today as since then. So this is a, something biblical is happening, okay? God is allowing something great, even though it seems not so great. Satan is angry. The reality is, there is no persecuted church. You say day of prayer for the persecuted church. There really is no persecuted church. There's only the church. We are no different. You all, we all, we all, y'all are no different than they. No more or less important than they. Or any other Christian. We're all treated the same. That's the point. God is not a respecter of persons, right? That means he doesn't really care about us individually. You're more special than that guy? No, no. Not even, I don't care what the subject is. Israel or all the rest of it. Either they have a role to play, so he chose them. But it doesn't mean they're better than you. And you're not better than them. So we're all together. There's only the church, right? So we're no more or less special than these guys in prison 50 years ago, the people in the Middle East who can't meet for church today, Stephen in the first century, which we heard about from Pastor last week. No difference. We're no better, no worse. We can expect the same. It's not about us. Um, I was at another Voice of Martyr conference about two years ago, and something else I'll never forget is there was a pastor there from Nigeria. Just as sweet, humble, soft-spoken as could be guy. I'm hanging out with him. We had lunch together, you know, before he went up to speak. We spent, basically spent two days together, and it was really cool. And this guy is just so, you know, so humble and hardly said a word. But his nation, if you, if you know anything about Nigeria, they've been just ravaged against the church. There's this huge enemy called Boko Haram, right? And they, they, they say they're part of ISIS now. So they've got an Islamic terror problem, uh, a big one. Remember, they kidnapped all those girls. Remember this whole thing? Horrible. Um, so this guy's in the middle of it. He's actually ministering in that place. In those towns where it's happening, he's there. And he's not moving away. He, he's called to be there. So he finally gets up. So he personally knows these guys. He knows this persecution firsthand. So he gets up and he tells a church full of Americans. Does he say, I, I hope that persecution never comes to America like it has to Nigeria? No. He says, I pray for persecution to come to you. So the church here can wake up. Man. 
I didn't expect that from that guy, you know? Woo! Okay. And yeah, after the, you know, people are like, okay, all right, all right. Um, maybe we should be changing our prayer a little bit. I don't know. It's not about you. It's not about us. Here's the, here's the point. It's, it's a great blessing and a privilege to be, live where we live and to walk where we're walking. There's no doubt. Amen. But that has bred all kinds of laziness, yeah. extreme laziness, uh, closing your eyes, uh, averting your gaze, focus on the completely wrong stuff. We have to throw off this selfishness, guys. And I'm not, I'm not accusing anybody. The church in America generally. We are selfish and lazy. Amen. Throw off selfishness. Throw off offense. Stop being offended. Yeah, yeah. Please. And I'm preaching to myself. Trust me on this. I know of what I speak. Unforgiveness. Throw off unforgiveness. This is silly. And yes, yeah, sometimes there's other factors and there's, there's even, you know, demonic stuff going on that, that gets, ins, you know, really messes people up and they, and they have issues with these things. But in general, God, I mean, God is able. He's more than able. This is no problem for God. Is the church going to get out of bed? Throw off offense. Throw off unforgiveness. Throw off division. Throw off division. Now I understand there's doctrines and all this stuff, and, and we just we just had this Reformation Day 500 years ago and all this. But guys, look, the devil's gonna kill a Catholic just as fast as he's gonna kill you. Right? Yes, he will. I don't care Orthodox, uh, cops in Egypt, uh, Presbyterians. Non-denominational. Hey, well, I'm going to kill you. Allahu Akbar. Wait, I'm your non-denominational. All right, never mind. You're cool. You're cool. I, only want the, I only want the Orthodox today. <laughs> no. Because we claim Christ. We claim Jesus. We have something inside us that's different that the world hates. Oh, man. Throw off this stuff. Throw off immaturity. That's the bottom line about all that. It's immaturity. We're, we're, churches are trying to just operate like businesses and like draw other people in and like steal each other's members. That's America, the church. That's crazy. That's what's going on. There's a church on every corner. That's the expression, right? Maybe there shouldn't be. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Are they all full and banging every week? You know, like. Are the, are, the, are the evangelists just pouring out of there? I don't see that. I don't know. So here's what I'm saying. No more complaining. Please. No more complaining about church leadership. My pastor doesn't do this or that. He doesn't wear long sleeves. Oh, Jesus. For example. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, no, I'm not. I play alone so I like that. <laughs> For example, don't complain about church leadership. Don't complain about your local church stuff. Don't complain about the style of worship here. This isn't for like everyone's favorite style of music, but it works, doesn't it? Amen. Yeah. Sometimes it rocks. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's 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 a uh, little you know gets you. Blue. Right? It all works. Stop complaining about it. Don't worry about the kids' program. Don't worry about you know what I'm talking about? I mean this stuff is actually happening. People are leaving churches and searching for new churches like it's a job. Or you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm in a career mode I'm between jobs right now, you know. I'm between churches, I don't know. Dudes, <laughs> dudes, come on! What are you doing? What are we doing? We've got people dying being 
thrown in prison, raped, in, uh, enslaved, tortured, actually discriminated against. I'm sorry, like I'm, I'm totally with the, you know, the, we're, the, don't bake a cake for the, you know, this particular thing, and you're, that's persecution. That's not persecution. It's not. This stuff is real, and it's really going on. They can't even meet, they can't even come to a place to meet, for crying out loud. They have to meet in the dark in the middle of the night. Ride your bike there. I mean, this is crazy. So let's stop worrying about this other non important stuff. It's not about us. Well, I was in Israel this summer. Very awesome. Uh, totally cool. I met a wonderful man of God there. It was kind of fun, actually. He was late. Like, everyone arrived at this certain day. He arrived like 12 hours later. So, in the middle of the night, we get a. He was supposed to be my roommate. And so there's like four of us in the room. And it's like, boom, you know, like, oh, oh, my God, it's Israel. Who's shooting? And uh, no, it's, it's just Paul. Oh, cool. Paul's here. Paulos. Yeah. Paul, uh, he's from Africa. Originally, he was born and raised in Africa. But he lives in the U.S. now. Uh, but he's a missionary still to several African nations. After we left Israel, we stayed there for 10 days. He was off and did a trip of Africa. Do missions and evangelize them. This guy's for real, you know? And um, he's just a young guy. I mean, he's 30 something, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I didn't ask him. Sorry, honey. My wife always wants to know, so what's their deal? Where are they from? How many kids do they have? How old are they? Where do they work? <laughs> uh, I don't know. It was some guy. I remember he had a little dreadlock action. So, point is, on the bus, uh, one of these, one of the uh, legs of our tour in Israel, I'm sitting next to Paul, we're, we're talking, we're having a great, the spirit is really leading this conversation, it's really cool, and um, we're, and we're always, you know, we're discussing about how we, the Western church, the American church, we're always talking a good game, you know what I mean? Yeah, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we spend millions on this, we're going to send people here. Then, like... Like, out of nowhere, like a bolt of lightning, the, the Holy Spirit just starts speaking through Paul. And he says, Aaron quoted it. And he says, These are the end times. We need to do something. I'm like, whoa. All right, Lord, 10 4 on that. So it's not enough uh, to acknowledge things. Get right with God. Do the things he would have you do. Be the disciple that he called you to be. be. Whatever your calling is, grow into that. Let's go. There's no reason to wait. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? The P Pentecost part two? <laughs> I mean, we got the Holy Spirit. Let's rock and roll. All right? <laughs> Well, but what, I don't know what I'm waiting for. As soon as I understand Revelation, I am going out. I promise. Right, Lord? Mm -mm. He's got you now. Do something for the kingdom. That's Paul's point. That's Spirit's point. Do something for the kingdom. It's not about you. Do it for him. Do it for your brothers and sisters around the world. Do it for the lost. We want to increase the kingdom, right? We want to be heaven to be as big as possible. Don't we? I mean, we say that. Are we acting like that? Do we believe it really? Really? Yes. Well, praise God, some of us will. Now listen to this. Miriam. Uh, that's how you say Mary in Arabic. In uh, Hebrew, excuse me. Uh, Miriam, uh, she's from the Middle East. Doesn't say what nation she was from, but she was speaking, uh, doing a tour of churches. And again, like Paul and like this pastor from Nigeria, she says this, don't pray. And we say, how do we pray? How do we pray? What's the International Day of Prayer? How do we do this? She says, don't pray for persecution to be stopped. But pray for the Christians there, for their boldness, for their encouragement, for their faith, that they can all be witnesses for God's work. And for God. And she says, you have to be very awake because there is no time.
to waste. Mm -hmm. Times are wasted. So we have no excuse, at least, to, to pray, right? Excuse not to pray. We got that. We got to do that. We can do that. We can do that right now. So let's see exactly how. Ms. Chris, whenever you're ready with that slideshow, that would be awesome. If it's there. It's a couple of prayer points about how we can actually pray right now. Take this home. Oh, by the way, reminds me, I've got this table set up down here. This is all free. Uh, there are 10 copies of the book Torture for Christ, which you saw the video of. Feel free to take it. Give it to your friends. Maybe you've read it already. Uh, and then we've got 25 armbands. You don't have to wear them on There's, uh, It's an armband that says, I stand with the persecuted. They say, I commit to pray. Um, just something to remind you and to remind folks. There it is. God bless you. So feel free to come up and take this, okay? At the service, no problem. Take them all. Uh, if you, I, I just, you know, stepped out and, and bought all this stuff. So if you wanted to, you know, throw a little penny in the jar there, you can. That's up to you. All right, that'll support wings of the eagle. There you go. All right, so here's how we can do it. The first, just check out the screen. The first request of persecuted Christians all the time is, we need money. No, we need food. No protection. No, pray for us. Pray for them. All right. Next, simple. There's a. There's some folks right there. That's a little small to read, I know. But again, these, these are the guys that say, just pray for us. Number two, pray that Christians around the world who are in prison for their faith, pray for them. Remember, this is not for they committed a crime and they happen to be Christians, okay? They didn't rob the bank and happen to be a believer. They're in jail because they're a believer, and that's it. There are laws on the books in Pakistan, in <coughs> India... And Middle Eastern nations or Sharia nations that forbid conversions. If you preach the gospel, you're inciting them to change their religion. That's blasphemy. You're out. Pray that God will strengthen, protect, and encourage them. That's the main... That's what Miriam just said. Right? Because ultimately, the aim of persecution is to intimidate the church, and to make them weak, make us weak, and to ultimately deny Christ. That's what it's meant to do. And if we won't deny him, then sometimes we're killed. And here's a, you want to talk about a fancy baptism? There's one. It's the middle of the jungle in a makeshift pool to get someone baptized. Because they have to hide. Pray for God's protection of pastors and leaders. Evangelists are out there sharing the gospel in these restricted and hostile nations. Uh, restricted nation just means they have some laws that are not so nice to Christians and hostile. They're actively, it's a government policy person. Like here, I believe this, I believe this is Pakistan. He's, he's given a, a Muslim friend some, something to look at. Why can't we do that? We've got some here. Pray for the provision and encouragement of Christians whose family members were killed for living out their faith in Christ. This is a big, big deal. Obviously, if you have a, a man like, like right here, this is a pastor's uh, family. He was killed. What's going to happen to them? No money. No dad. No husband. So there's that aspect. Pray for them. And pray for the government officials in these nations, that they will come to know Jesus and follow His will for their lives. I mean, ultimately, I tell people all the time, like every time some terrorism or horrible thing happens, like, how do we stop this? How do we stop this? It must be immigration or something. No, it's the gospel. That's how you're going to stop a terrorist. The only reason they're going to stop is because they're going to realize it's evil. So keep preaching. And there's, you saw some, that's a rebuilding project. That's a church right there. Uh, pray for Christian converts. This is huge. 
Christian converts from Islam who must decide, who must decide, this is a thing now, it's not just enough to, yeah, I'm a Christian now, that's great, honey, he's wacky. That's about all we get to deal with here, right? If you leave Islam, you have to decide when and how to tell your family and friends that you follow Jesus, like this brother in India. <coughs> Why? Mm, because bad things happen. Real bad things. And you don't want anything to happen to you. You don't want anything to happen to your sister or brother or your family. And all of a sudden now, if they don't hate you and they don't hurt you and they don't expel you and kick you out of the family, then they're going to be in trouble from the surrounding town that you're in. They're all going to know, oh, that's the Christian family. The, that's the one with holding the Christian in their house, you know. He's trying to convert people. We've got to stop this. So now their ministries are actually reaching into these places. So pray for like radio, television, internet ministries that broadcast God's word into these nations. Now, in some tiny, teeny, tiny way, yeah, and obviously that they would yield fruit. There's a, there's, a, there's an old ham radio or something. That, that's like they give MP3 players out. The whole Bible's on this little disc. Um, Christian books, things like that. These right, the airways are a powerful resource, even the internet. And you know, in some tiny way, Wings of the Eagles kind of, kind of starting to do that. Um, because we get, you know, I get notifications from these folks in these other lands. Like, how did you hear that? <laughs> um, but it's working. And God's going to use that, okay, to reach folks. So continue to pray for that. And there are ministries specifically intended for that. There's like a big one called Iran Alive that goes in satellite. They own satellites and they go directly into Iran every day. And the church is exploding there because of that. Uh, pray for provision and safe delivery of Bibles. To believers in these nations. They don't have access. Some nations it's illegal. You can't own a Bible in North Korea. You can't own So most believers don't have. Most of us have multiple copies. I'm willing to say. Most of those don't have it. And this is the part of the what they have to do. You put it on your back. A whole bunch of them. And try to reach some village. This is the, the work. The actual footwork that's being done. Okay next. Pray persecuted Christians will boldly witness for him, even to their persecutors. That's huge. Right? I mean, I, I, my gut reaction is, hey, you're, you're coming against me? Let's fight. You know, let's go. Let's throw down. Not really. That's, that's, that's not what the Lord would have us do. Witness boldly, yes, all the time. Especially, I, look, you should take it as a sign of Something good is happening when someone's coming against you because you're witnessing. So continue to do it. Just be bold for it. Next. Uh, pray that us, <laughs> we Christians in free nations, will choose to stand with our persecuted brothers and sisters. Because as we said, we're all one. There's a good example right there. This, this, this little boy has no legs. And this is a man from uh, Northern Europe, I believe. Went to help him. All right, so we're all the same. We're all one. Uh, can we stand together and do a symbolic thing right now? Can you hold hands with another person. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful. Yes. Okay, let's, let's lift up our prayer to Father right now. Father God, we come as one, as one. You and your Son are one, we are one. We are one body in Christ. You are the head, but we are your body. We say here in this fellowship, we are united with those who are persecuted for your faith, your most holy faith. We pray for all these things that they ask for, all the things that you would have them do. Boldness, encouragement. Yes, miraculous freedom and deliverance from captors, but if not, miraculous testimony that they would continue to preach Jesus in every circumstance, in every condition, and everything that may, the world will see as going wrong. 
the world sees as failure of you. We see the truth. We see that the heavenly economy is upside down. That to live is to die, and to die is to live. And then we have a much greater promise coming. This is not it, this is it. but for a moment, a minor affliction. A minor, minor affliction. You endured much more. Not only physical pain, which we must remember you did, but emotional pain. Because you knew what was happening. You knew their minds. You knew their hearts. And you forgave them anyway. That we might forgive like that. That we might love like that. That we might take serious your Holy Spirit and to intentionally display your fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, and the freedom that that brings. And to set free the captives in this nation and every nation. Take our job seriously, Lord. There's work to do while the sun is up because midnight is coming or no one can work. And so we pray for your provision upon this Fellowship right now, Lord, as we are one in Christ Jesus, touch us, heal us, give us boldness, give us opportunity to witness, give us the ministries that we've been dreaming of that you have put into our hearts, Lord. Bring us into that destiny, bring us into that fullness, let us throw out the fear and exercise faith, great faith, like you show. Jesus, model everything for us. We ask for brothers and sisters to be one with us right now, and to know that we're praying for them. And to know that you love them, and that we love them. And to do your work, providing for them, sheltering them, visiting them, food and drink, everything that you'd have for the least of these experience, let us be the ones to do that. In the name of Jesus we ask, amen. Amen. Oh, I'm not asking you. <laughs> like it's an option. <laughs>